the topic is strategic performance measures. Last time we stopped at uh, divisional performance measures. We were to do an illustration on uh, return on investment, return on uh, capital employed, residual income, and ever. So welcome to the lesson. We are going to answer that question that uh, appeared on your screen. This is a past paper question that was tested in August 2024. Question 1 reads, Greenlight Limited is a government energy generating company. The company is segmented into subunits. The following is the selected divisional annual information for two for its two target subunits. These are subunit X and subunit Y. We have data for subunit X and subunit Y. Then below the table there we read four measures are used to evaluate the performance of the subunit managers based on the data above the budgeted performance measures for the subunits are as follows we've given the residue income the return on investment economic value added then we have the asset turnover ratio required calculate and comment on each of the following financial performance measures for each unit roman one return on investment roman two residual income roman three economic value added number four assets turnover ratio this is the past paper question august 2024 question five roman one Return on investment. Return on investment. That is the requirement for Roman 1. And we are to calculate the return on investment for both subunits, subunit X and subunit Y. Unit X and subunit y we can begin with subunit x what is the formula for return on investment return on investment this is sub unit x return on investment we know is equal to profit before interest and tax we divide by the capital employed capital employed times 100 now from the question what is the Profit before interest and tax for subunit X that is 82.5. Do you see that? That is uh, the operating income is the profit before interest and tax 82.5. Then we have the capital employed 188 million. So we have the items directly from the question 82 500 divided by 188 times 100 percent for subunit X so give me the return on investment. What the return on investment? 43.88. Sarah says 
43.88%. So if you are to compare 43.88 with the budgeted one of 25%, you can see that uh, the return on investment is higher. It is higher than the budgeted return R or I of 43.88% is higher than the budgeted return on investment of 25%. Then we do the same for sub unit Y return on investment is equal to profit before interest on tax and the profit before interest on tax here is uh, 114 million we divide by the capital employed of 188 million times 100 percent how much is it Seventy six point six per cent. So again, the ROI of sub unit Y is higher than the budgeted. The budgeted one there is uh, what is the budgeted what is the budgeted it's 20 percent roi of 20 percent do you see that it is higher so subunit y has a higher roi than subunit x so that means also that subunit Y, if you are to compare it with the return investment for subunit X, the R or I for subunit Y is higher than that of subunit X so we can compare first firstly with the for each subunit with the budgeted uh, ROI then after that we then compare the ROI for be, between the subunits and you can see that uh, the ROI for subunit Y is greater than that of subunit X that is Roman 1. Roman 2, you are to calculate the residual income. Residual income. Roman 2. Residual income. What is the formula for residual income? Sarah says it's not 76. 60.64 so this is 60 60.64 percent not 76 so let's move on to residual income residual income look at the question what is the residual income given the information down there now to calculate the residual income we need to deduct the cost of capital charge on assets from the division of profit from the division of profit so residual income is equal to the division of or submitted profit minus minus the cost of capital charge 
the cost of capital charge on assets the cost of capital charge on assets the cost of capital charge on assets that is the formula we deduct the cost of capital charge on assets from the divisional uh, profits the profits are given the profits that we used in uh, roman 1 and roman 2 so what we need here is to determine the cost of capital and looking at the question look at the question what is the cost of capital for division x just below capital employed we have cost of capital of 12 percent do you see that so we are going to apply the 12 percent on the assets assets and how do you determine the value for assets from the table under subunit x we also have the average total assets of 250 million you see that candidates so receive your income for subunit x will be equal to the divisional profit which we have here 82 82 million 500 minus 12 percent this is the cost of capital times the average total assets of 250 million that is the return on investment subunit x then return on investment subunit y will be the division of profit which is uh, 114 million 114 million minus the cost of capital the cost of capital is the same 12 percent the average total assets for 56 from the table for 56 million So what is the return on investment? The residual income we get, we are going to compare it with the budgeted residual income. The budgeted residual income for X, budgeted residual income for X is 30 million, for Y is 30 million. Please give me the figures. Then we have ever, ever economic value added, economic value added, what is the formula for economic value added economic value added what is the formula for economic value added it is just no part less capital charge no part minus capital charge from three equal to no part minus the capital charge and we recall candidate the capital charge we take the weighted average cost of capital the weighted average cost of capital average cost of capital times the net assets that is the capital charge it is no part net operating profit after tax minus capital charge to 2.5 that is for x correct you mean x is it 52 500 52 500 
52 million 500 52 million 500 so this is the actual what what is the budgeted from the question budgeted residual income the budgeted residual income please from the question what is the budgeted residual income the budgeted residual income 30 million. is it 30 million yes 30 million that is higher residual income is higher than the budgeted received income of 30 million it is higher give me the received income for y 59 280 59 280 again the received income is higher than the budgeted residual income of 30 million the budgeted residual income is 30 million this one we are we have it at 59 million 280 which is higher but we have to compare the residual income for subunit y and subunit x the residual income for x subunit x is higher than the residual income for for x income for y is higher than the one for x then we move on to the next uh, performance measure ever ever is equal to no part minus the capital charge minus the capital charge so ever for subunit x will be equal to no part what is the no part no part for x no part net operating profit after tax net operating profit after tax look at the table below the controllable fixed cost we have the operating income that is the operating income before tax. but we need the net operating income after tax are we given the tax rate are we given the tax rate yes the tax rate is 30 percent the tax rate is 30 percent and therefore the no part for x will be the 82 500 times 1 minus 0 0.3 we remove the tax Okay, that will give us this is this 82.5 million is the operating profit before tax. When you apply 1 minus 0 0.3, we get the net operating profit after tax. Then we deduct the capital charge, the weighted average cost of capital. Do we have it from the question. The weighted average cost of capital is 12 percent times the net assets we have the net assets we have the net assets yeah net assets we are going to use the capital employed of 188 you see that capital employed times capital employed of 188 188 million then what is the ever for subunit y we're going to have the operating profit before tax of 114 million 
apply 1 minus 0 0.3 minus the the charge is 12 percent of uh, the capital employed what is the capital employed what is the capital employed from the question please what is the capital employed for y 188 million 188 million so give me ever ever x ever y so this is 35 190 million and what is the budgeted ever what is the budgeted ever is 33 million and therefore the ever of 35 ever is higher than the budgeted ever of 33 million that is for x how about y 57 240 57 240 that is ever for y what is the budgeted ever for y give me the question 55 okay and this one is 57 it's also high ever y is higher than the budgeted ever but when you compare y and x ever for y and x for y is 57 for x ever for x is uh, 35 so ever y is higher than ever subunit x so that is uh, ever then you move to the next performance measure which is asset turnover Roman four asset turn over what is the formula for asset turnover the formula for asset turnover this is simply the annual sales minus or over total assets so assets asset turn over for x will be the annual sales for x over total assets for x we have annual sales from the question yes we have sales turnover the first item there is sales turnover and for x is 875 for y is 1.368875 then do we have the total assets yes 250 so that is 875 875 million divide 250 million that will be the asset turnover for x then asset turnover for subunit y will be equal to again the 
earn your sales for subunit Y, we deduct or we or we, we we divide by the total assets. Give me the annual sales for X. Jami says 3.5. 3.5 this is 3.5 times 3.5 times how about y y 3 times what is the comment when you compare the turnover with the budgeted give let's have a look at the budgeted Asset turnover, the last item in the table there is 2.36. 2.36, when you compare it with the 3.5, you can see that the asset turnover is higher than the budgeted. Asset turnover is higher than the budgeted. turnover for x how about for y what is the budgeted asset turnover for y the budgeted asset turnover for y is 4.12 that one is lower the asset turnover the asset turnover of three times is lower than the budgeted one of 4.12 times but when you compare again between the units, the asset turnover for subunit X is higher. The asset turnover of X is higher than the asset turnover of subunit y so that is the solution to the past paper question that was uh, tested in that period august 2024